Welcome everyone to January the 31st. We are on our last day of January and today we have our recap, our weekly update on how things have been going in Mythic Plus. Now, much like the raid, this might be bound to have some, some new things, some changes, because we are now going through two different sets of changes. The changes, the hotfix buffs that happened on January the 9th, and then the more buffs, mostly, which happened on the release of 10.0.5. So maybe now it's time to start seeing some, some, some changes in the meta, some, some more popularity, for example, to some specs that have not been as popular recently, maybe? So let's go and take a look how things have been changing so far. Now, Let's start on our comparison on specs being played in Mythic Plus, and I wanted to use this as a comparison window with what we had right before the release of the hotfix buffs of January the 9th. So let me go and pick up from my from my archives. Let's let's okay, page 633. Over here, this thing right here. So we have our comparison of tanks from roughly three or so weeks ago to how things are now. Granted, tanks have not been buffed or nerfed that much since then, so it's gonna be our least changed role. That's how things were for tanks roughly three weeks ago and roughly before any balance tuning came live. So we can see that after a few weeks, at the very least, the popularity of Protection Warrior went down a little bit in favor, in particular, of the popularity of Protection Paladin. This might also be, of course, due to plus 20 keys becoming much more accessible. So of course, as the Gigachad Protection Warriors started trying to get into plus 25s, you had more and more of the less popular specs making their way into plus 20s. That, of course, can also be the reason as to why we're going to be seeing more of the other specs now being popular into plus 20s, now that plus 20s are no longer the absolute highest level of keys. Still, though, significant improvement so far, at the very least, for Protection Paladin, and also, slightly worth mentioning, for Brewmaster Monk which has increased by basically 50% compared to three weeks ago. So far, it looks like more monks are drinking the buffs Kool-Aid of the, the buffs that the monks received in the past few weeks. After tanks, we have healers. Now, unfortunately, healers haven't received that much of a turnover. We still see, what a surprise, Restoration Druid, and we still see Preservation Evoker at the top, and also their numbers are barely even changing. This is also quite surprising given that we have quite a few buffs going the way of healers. Pretty much all of the healers in here, not the popular ones, have been buffed with the exception perhaps of Holy Paladin. We had quite some significant buffs to the damage of Resto Shaman, quite some overhaul buffs to Discipline Priest, buffs also to Mist Weaver Monk. So after three weeks and all of those buffs coming live, the biggest thing worth noticing is that yes, those healers are still increasing. Mist Weaver is increasing, Resto Shaman is increasing, but more importantly, Discipline Priest now is getting played a little bit more. Now, this is just the first week. This is only the first week of 10.0.5, so we will see if in the future this growth of a Discipline Priest will continue, since at the moment it is still quite less played than, than Holy Priest. After the healers and the tanks, we start getting into some more juicy territory, the territory of the melee DPS. Now, this is um, somewhat interesting, mostly due to the swap between the same class. We don't see that much of a change outside of that. We do see some more Retribution Paladins being played, okay. We also see some more Enhancement Shamans being played than before, okay. But what we noticed more is that compared to three weeks ago, there are way less, uh, we can say, way less Outlaw Rogues and way more Subtlety Rogues. That seems to be the main change for Rogues. And also, there seems to be a significant growth of Arms Warriors compared to before. I mean, there doesn't seem to be. There is. From 1.5 to 4.5%, they, like, tripled 
their participation compared to three weeks ago, which is of course due to the significant amount of buffs that Arms Warrior has received. So in Mythic Plus so far, at the very least as far as melee DPS go, this seems to be the main change, the growth of Arms Warrior. We can see, we can see even more drastic, even more stark changes in the ranged DPS. Because as you can see here, we had some some towers. We had some two towers before, maybe even three towers before compared to now. Now it's a much more even landscape. So first of all, Marksmanship Hunter has been losing out quite a bit to Beast Mastery Hunter in the past three weeks. Also Arcane Mage. Arcane Mage has almost thrown away its lead against Frost. Now Frost is um, in, in almost touching range of Arcane compared to three weeks ago. Another spec not quite in touching range yet, but the growth is uh, like gigantic. If you look at three weeks ago, before the buffs, to, before the double buffs to destruction, you had Demonology at 22%, actually the most popular range DPS spec above, uh, above plus 20 level keys, and now it has dropped down dramatically in favor of Destruction Warlock. That is by far the biggest change since we started getting balance tuning three weeks ago. Since we started getting balance tuning changes three weeks ago. Surprisingly, the two arguably most buffed specs of ranged, the Shadow Priest and the Devastation Evoker, are not increasing that much. Yes, yes, there is a small increase, a tiny increase, but nothing nothing too dramatic yet. Talking about nothing too dramatic, we can transition smoothly into the DPS performance straight out of Warcraft logs to try to gauge the amount of keys they have completed, but also weigh it together with the level of keys, the difficulty of the keys that they have completed. And this is our updated list. Once again, this is much more easy to see any changes if we compare this to a few weeks ago. You can see that the growth of Destruction is very visible. For even more dramatic point, back then Destruction was last place. So before the reset of January the 9th, where the buffs would come through, Destruction was last. Now they are third. That is by far the biggest makeover, the biggest Pimp My Ride Destruction edition that we can see in this uh, in this week's worth of changes. Again, surprisingly, not too many drastic movement to Devastation Evoker, which we pointed out was being buffed, and some increase, we can call it an increase, to Shadow Priest. Again, not dramatic, but still visible compared to before they would get all of their buffs. Now, what is also interesting is that previously we pointed out the two less played mage specs on top of getting buffed three weeks ago, they also got buffed in patch 10.0.5. They received a flat 5% more damage to all of their abilities. What we see this week is... God damn it! Fire Mage currently being above Arcane just by a tiny bit compared to the growth, looking at the growth they had since three weeks ago. Now, as you might know by this point, I dread a meta with Fire Mage. I, you can say, hate Fire Mage. I hate to see it meta. So I hope this is not going to be the harbinger of some worse things, like having Fire be meta for the next six or so months. But unfortunately, as it has performed better this week, I am contractually obligated to mention it to all of you. You can better see the improvements right over here. You can see the improvements of Destruction Warlock right after the 9th of January. They start spiking all the way up. And then you can see the improvements of Fire Mage right after they got buffed in 10.0.5 by 5% more damage. They are also spiking all the way up. Melee DPS, on the other hand, as we pointed out, is not nearly as dramatic. Even the buffed specs don't seem to have performed that much better after the buffs. We can see here the only reasonable growth is the one to Arms Warrior, currently, currently on the rise. Now, before continuing to delve a tiny bit deeper on the specs, let's take a break. Let's take a break and talk about the dungeons so far, because this week was fortified bolstering and storming. By this point, on Tuesday, the week is almost over. What can we say 
about this week? Well, you can have your own opinion. We have gotten seven weeks of Mythic Plus so far, but stats are telling us that this was the third best week of the season. Only beaten by Sanguine and Explosive, and also only beaten by Raging and Quaking. All of those were fortified weeks, not tyrannical. So, purely looking at the scores, we have to say that this week was a top three week in terms of ease of completion for the keys. Talking about the keys themselves, the nerfs to several dungeons are starting to be quite more visible. Once again, if we discount the absolute joke of Shadow Moon Burial Grounds, all of the other keys start getting quite quite handy, quite manageable, all of them, as you can see, except for one, the dreaded Azor Vault, all of them are well above the 50% chance of completion, including quite a few high ones, like Calls of Valor and Nokud Offensive in the 70%, that's quite, that's quite a surprise, especially for Nokud, not a, not a generally well-liked dungeon, or considered quite easy dungeon, this week has been quite the passable dungeon. We can talk once again about the success chance of the specs, even though once again it's worth pointing out that this is not really that, that demonstrative of how good the specs are. After all, the, the best spec supposedly in the meta right now, Subtlety Rogue, is at a casual middle of the pack, while something like Fire Mage is now the second best spec to have a good chance of success in your keys. It's just it's just done for fun. I just wanted to show the success chance because I wanted to, <laughs> to show you the, the healer success chance. I found it quite fun to have Restoration Shaman and Discipline Priest as the two most likely to succeed in a key compared to the other much more popular, as you can see by the amount of runs, Restoration Druid and Preservation Evoker. Maybe it's because of the hardcore, you know, the hardcore elite old school players who did not reroll to a flavor of the month getting a higher higher score compared to all of the rerollers playing playing resto druid or playing evoker maybe maybe that's why and then we close the dungeon look with our most popular composition setups in mythic plus so we looked last week how the situation was and then this was also the situation before the first round of buffs on january the 9th Compared to this week, there has been a resurgence somehow, a resurgence of preservation evokers to go from being 3 out of 12 to being 5 out of 12 in the top compositions. We have lost. We have lost Arcane Mage again. We have lost more Warlocks. We have lost more Hunters. And what we gained in return is more Enhancement Shamans. Now, it's worth pointing out that Enhancement Shaman is going to be very good for a spec like Restoration Druid. Because as you bring a Prot Warrior to all of your keys and then a Restoration Druid to all of your keys, what you are missing is Bloodlust. If Mage is not really meta, if Elemental Shaman or Resto Shaman are not really meta, if BM Hunter or Survival Hunter are not really meta and also having to bring a Marksmanship Hunter having to pull off their pet just so that they can Bloodlust is also quite clunky, who can give you Bloodlust is either a Devastation Evoker, which isn't meta, a Preservation Evoker, which you can't bring because you are bringing a Resto Druid, or the Enhancement Shaman. Luckily, in this meta, it just so happens that Announcement Shaman is quite good, so it's quite the good solution for groups bringing a Resto Druid to add an Enhancement Shaman to their group, to close out the list of mandatory buffs you want for your Mythic Plus key, one being, of course, Bloodlust. So, significant resurgence, so far at least, in the top groups of Enhancement Shaman. So, finishing the video, talking about the specs in here, finishing the video with the tier list straight from uh, sub-creation, taking a look at all of the top players in the top logs of keys, making an average of that. When it comes to tanks, no surprise. Once again, Protection Warrior is at the super top, followed by a whole bunch of tank specs. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that Prot Warrior is better than all of them. When it comes to healers, as soon as you see this, you're like, yes, of course, it's the same thing we have seen for weeks. What a surprise. Well, actually, 
we do have a surprise because this is the A tier at the moment for healers. Out of nowhere, we have the reworked Discipline Priest and the newly buffed, in particular in damage, newly buffed Restoration Shaman, currently being quite better than their previous iteration, doing quite better for now in Mythic Plus. The very the other buffed spec being Mistweaver Monk at the moment does not seem to be able to translate it, to convert it into good performances in Mythic Plus, at least so far. Off into the melee DPS with a picture we have seen before already quite a few times, Outlaw, Subtlety, Havoc, Enhancement all towards the top. The main difference this week is that Windwalker takes a step back into the A tier and is joined by the newly rising star of the melee DPS, the biggest buffs of the week going to Arms Warrior, currently in the A tier in Mythic Plus as well, after rising in the raid for their damage, they are doing so also in Mythic Plus. We then have what we expected initially, we already have the Balanced Druid there as we knew, we also knew about the growth of Destruction Warlock after the buffs, and now after the buffs we also have Shadow Priest making it into the A tier, once again no ranged spec into the S tier. I believe, I believe Balanced Druid, Balanced Druid made it into the S tier for one week only to then get knocked down into the A tier again. Who knows? Who knows if the growing in performance Fire Mage and the growing in popularity Frost Mage will also continue to rise in this type of tier list review and make them jump a tier by, by next week? But for now, this is the layout for the ranged DPS by the end of this fortified week. So, with this weekly overview of what's been going on in Mythic Plus, we are leaving each other with the reminder of what's gonna come, basically today in NA and tomorrow in EU, which is going to be the tyrannical week of Spiteful and Quaking. I think okay-ish um, as a week, not really too many difficulties in the boss fights besides Quaking, and also Spiteful should be going down quite okay, given that it's not fortified given that there are no other affixes annoying you with the trash mobs compared to the last week we had of Spiteful, which was paired with Grievous, which is definitely much more annoying. This week, Quaking is going to be much more manageable. So, a decent, decent enough week to push in Tyrannical for this next reset. After this is said and done, it's time to leave each other. I'm going to start the goodbyes on this last day of January by thanking all of my Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of this channel. Help which can be provided still by not having to spend a single dime by doing things like liking and commenting down below as well as subscribing to the channel as well. You can also, for more support, follow me on Twitter. That would be a good way to check out whatever I have to point out something to all of my viewers or get notified on whenever I go live on stream, talking about what is at this point an urban legend, the mysteries of the Eisen supposed stream that is supposed to go live around 10 p.m. Central European times, 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern US time zones. With this out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, I hope I can finish editing this before the shops close because I have to go out for some groceries and I don't want to interrupt my work here.